Thank you, gentlemen. General Berger, I want to return to the chairman's question about the 53 kilo. Given its costs, can you just tell us in a little more detail what is the long-term outlook for this helicopter? So our program of record is uh, 200 aircraft. That's our requirement. And uh, the two costs, uh, as, you, as uh, most folks in here are really well aware of, are the APUC, the, in, the individual cost up front, and then the flyaway recurring cost. Uh, the math, as, as outlined accurately before, w when we get on schedule for a buy and the learning curve continues up, then the cost starts to come down. But we have to close that gap because I owe you uh, an honest answer that this is an aircraft that we can afford. This is an aircraft that we can sustain over the lifespan of it. So, uh, so far, again, the engineering part, I'm very, very comfortable with. Now it's a function of making sure, closing the gap uh, to where I can convince you that this is a good, this is the best use of our resources for an aircraft we definitely need. So you're saying that you owe us an answer and you need to convince us. It doesn't sound like you are yet fully convinced yourself. I think there's room still to close the gap and, and Sikorsky ag agrees as, as well. The, the learning that happens on the first of anything, of course, they're, they're going to drive down the cost just because they're going to produce it more efficiently. And the engineering costs that are going to the first batch of research and, and uh, engineering models is, is going to go down. When do you think we might I think that yes, sir. answer? The next uh, contract is due to be awarded, I think, in the August, September time frame. We'll know then. Okay. I want to turn to another item that was in the President's budget request, um, which I found interesting. You are going to buy Tomahawk missiles this year. Specifically, I see the Marine Corps and FY19 asked for zero Tomahawk missiles. And in FY20, you asked for zero Tomahawk missiles. And in FY21, you have requested 48 Tomahawk missiles. I presume you're not planning to launch those off any of your amphibious ships. So could you tell us what you plan to do with those 48 Tomahawk missiles? Yes, sir. Part of the homework uh, that the Navy and Marine Corps have done over the past six months is how we think we're going to need to operate in the future as an integrated naval force. And that means the Marine Corps assumes a role which we have not had in the past 20 years, which is how do we contribute to sea control and sea denial? The Tomahawk missile is one of the tools that's going to allow us to do that. Now, it's a, much like the MQ-9 Reaper for us, it could be the answer, it could be the first step towards a longer term answer five, six, seven years from now. But what we need is long range precision fires for a small unit, a series of units that can from, from ship or from shore hold an adversary's naval force at risk. And that missile is going to help us, help us do that. And is it safe to say that this decision is a result of our withdrawal from the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty that you can explore these options? Um, I, I would assume so. I hadn't linked the two together. We just knew we need a long-range precision fires beyond the range that we, could, that we were restricted to before, yes. And most particularly in the Western Pacific, given China's long-range precision fires, since they were never a party to the INF Treaty? Absolutely, yes. Okay. I'm glad to see that you are exploring those options. I'm sure you're, a lot of your Marines would think it would be awesome if you launched them from amphibious ships, but probably not what you have in mind. But obviously, we face a pretty significant firepower gap in the Western Pacific, given China's stockpiling of thousands of missiles, and it's good to see your service beginning to address that. Thank you.